So this is why we're gathered here today, to think about how we can advance our understandings of wisdom and um, you know, why this is the critical time to be making some efforts to try to put some new ideas in, in, into, the, into the intellectual discussions. And we need to ask, if we're using wisdom that's unchanged and, and that was formed um, you know, over the millennia and based on ideas that are thousands of years old, are those ideas appropriate for the types of the types of considerations and challenges that we face today? As we have an acceleration of new technologies and new innovations, without values to help guide and ethics to help guide how people are making decisions, uh, these these things can be very dangerous indeed. Sergey Brin, who's a founder of Google. He says, certainly if you had all the world's information directly attached to your brain, you'd be better off. Well, maybe. <laughs> but knowledge in itself is not, is not going to be sufficient to get us there. I think we also need understanding, and that, that, uh, that includes issues such as foresight um, and understanding the consequences of different actions, um, how actions of today will affect us tomorrow and further into the future and what sorts of downstream repercussions different courses of actions, action can take. So I think it, one of the critical ingredients of wisdom is also humility, to focus, not, not to be drawn into the tendency of focusing on our knowledge and our understanding and our sense of values and what we know, but to be open to new possibilities and to realize how little we really know and how much there is to learn about. A hallmark and characteristic of wisdom is, is humility. And this is made really famous in, 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 in the example of Socrates. Um, but he says, you know, true wisdom comes to each of us when we realize how little we understand about life, ourselves and the world, and that wisdom begins with wonder. We can look at history. Um, I think one thing that we'll, we realize when we look at history is how complex uh, the sort of co chain of causality is. And that means prediction is very difficult. It's very much entrenched and um, uh, embedded in different circumstances that are happening at different levels. Some are more visible, some are happening behind the scenes. Um, but I think history is, is, can be a great teacher of, of possibilities for advancing wisdom. Moving towards the sciences, I think we can have insights from biology. Uh, in biology, you have systems that have evolved over millions and millions of years. Uh, complex relationships, cooperation, uh, situations for how uh, organisms handle complex and changing environments and make decisions that have future consequences in, in complex and changing environments. Uh, the, some of those ideas might have implications for some of the complex and changing environments that we face. Um, I think there's a lot of wisdom to be found in free markets and in econ economics generally. Uh, there's a push there towards ever increasing efficiency. Uh, there's sort of logics of competition that seem to drive innovation and creativity. Um, that's interesting. I like the idea of searching for new wisdom in mathematics and statistics. Uh, these abstract systems help us to understand the world in new ways, in ways that are invisible to us in, in some cases. Um, so I think we, we face a, you know, a very complex time right now, but there are huge possibilities for advancing visions of what wisdom might be. And the best way sometimes to to know what the future is like is to just actively create it. So not to be reactive, but to decide what you want to do and you know, to shoot for that. So our goal in bringing you all together here is to create a nexus of people who are going to be imaginative, creative, open to new ideas, um, and looking for a way of redefining and creating new types of wisdom for, for our time, for the, for the 21st century.